feel for joining both in person and virtually today at our November 20th Street Little Portugal CWT meeting. Thanks for coming out in moody weather. Um, just wanted to go through our typical agenda before we get started here. So today we're going to have our welcome and introduction. As usual, we'll then head into our phase two update presented by Bernice. And Erica will be sharing an update on our approved cost saving concepts to be advanced. And Bernice will share a little bit on our CWG meeting format. We'd love to open the floor, get some open discussion happening and hear feedback on our next steps forward on that. And then Brent will be sharing a construction update with you all. And then I'll share a BSV2 year in review, all the things that we've been doing in 2024. And we'll go back to next year. And then we'll close out with our typical CWG member report out as well as our next steps. Before we dive in, we wanted to change things up and keep things a little light here. So um, we decided to throw in a Thanksgiving icebreaker. So if you were only to choose three of the picture, which would it be? There's turkey, there's bread, there's mashed potatoes, pie, mac and cheese, cornbread, ham, stuffing, cranberry sauce. So as we go through our roll call, if you don't mind saying your name and your organization, as well as your top three, we'd love to hear. So with that, I do see Bill in the room. Bill, do you want to introduce yourself? And I'm going to pass you a mic so that our online folks can hear you as well. Hi. 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 Hello. There we go. Thank you. Hi, Bill Rankin. I'm with um, Friends and Five Blue Trail. Um, and provided gravy is included with either the turkey or the mashed potatoes, <laughs> I, I would say turkey, mashed potatoes, and cranberry. Thank you, Bill. And is Chris online? No. Okay, Miss Tony online. Yeah. All right, and Danny. Apologies for the delay and nope. getting my steps in. <laughs> so Danny Garza, uh, the the gravy goes with uh, the mashed potatoes. Uh, then I would like the uh, apple pie, and then and then I would like the apple pie. <laughs> Very good choice. Thank you, Danny. And I think alphabetically, David, right next. Uh, David Vieira, Flat East Church. Um, turkey, mashed potatoes, and mac and cheese, please. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, David. I think Dee might be next. Is she online? No. <laughs> okay. I, that's where my memory fails me. Um, is Alma online or Elsa? And no, I don't see Alma here. She's no, um, don't see you said that I do see Jim Malone if you want to introduce yourself. <laughs> Hello, Jim Malone, Jordan. Just over to San Jose, Bedouin High School. Turkey, cranberry sauce, and mac and cheese. Thank you, Damon. And I believe next is Jesus. Is he online? No. All right. And Justin. Marissa. No. And I do see Melissa here. Welcome to our CMG. Hi everyone, I'm Melissa Canella. I work here at the Muslim Heritage Plaza. Uh, so my walk up here with you. Um, <laughs> I would pick ham, mashed potatoes, and mac and cheese. Thank you, Melissa. And last but not least, Terry. 
Mm -hmm. Terry Christensen from University. And I don't know what's wrong with you people, but stuffing. Yes. <laughs> oh, no. Turkey and mashed potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for closing us strong, Terry. Oh, three gizzards right there. Thank you. <laughs> 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 All right. Thank you for folks coming in person and online. And online folks, if there's any audio issues, please do let us know. Um, and raise a hand and man can take a look at that. So also just want to share some of our upcoming meetings that are happening. This is our last one of 2024. So thank you for joining. Our next meeting is February 12th on our typical Wednesday. And there's a few PTA Board of Directors meetings that we wanted to share with you between now and February. So a few um, regular Board of Directors meetings as well as oversight committee meetings. As always, we'll be sending out in invites and reminders for any of the meetings to come. So be on the lookout for that. And then also wanted to bring to your attention that we are having a community meeting, both virtual and in person in December. So if you haven't received any invitations, we're sending that out shortly, but just know that we'll be having it on Zoom as well as the Santa Chamber of Commerce. And we'll share more later in this meeting. Yep. And going forward, man will be emailing alerts for meetings to come just in general for the reminders. Yes, David. Um, question, who has taken the former council members seat on the oversight committee? <laughs> Oh, sorry, under the you're right. No, the oversight committee. Cohen. Yeah. Did he do it all? Did he take over the the board seat too? No, I think the member. Oversight committee. Yeah. On the board. Oversight. It's good management. Yeah, I think it's good management, which is good for us. Yeah, because he knows us. Well, let's take another one. All right, I just wanted to share our meeting objectives for today. So we're going to really be providing some BSB2 project updates and look ahead to 2025 and also clarify the structure of our CWG meetings going forward. We'll have some time for discussion and want to get your feedback and thoughts on that on the next steps. And also want to provide just a general space for opportunity for feedback. There's lots of agenda items, as mentioned, so there'll be plenty of moments for pause and, and your thoughts and questions there. And so with that, I do want to pass it off to Bernice for our case to update. So I wanted to just introduce and reintroduce you to the team and uh, want you all to feel um, very familiar and comfortable and never hesitate to reach out to any of us. Um, on uh, the staff, myself, and I'm leading the external affairs team, wanted to introduce Erica, who has been on the project. Um, I've worked with Erica since she joined the BART um, project as a consultant in 2011, but she has now joined um, BTA and is the deputy director for the external affairs team. Brent is the uh, manager of planning and outreach for the external affairs team. And we have Matt sitting in the back who is leading the communications and outreach efforts um, for uh, the team. And Nan has recently joined the team and she is leading uh, the outreach now for 20th Street Little Portugal. So hope um, you get familiar with Nan. She is on the computer right here taking <laughs> copious notes for you all. Um, Adriano is leading uh, the stationary ex um, efforts at the downtown station. Erin uh, handles the Deridon station. Uh, Tiffany is helping with our communications. She's in the back of the room taking uh, notes and helping navigate things technically. Angela has recently joined the team and she's helping with um, community outreach and external affairs. Kristen has been leading our CWG efforts and she will be taking a little break pretty soon for some really important things as you can all see, but she will be coming back for sure to be uh, re-engaging you in 2025 uh, when she gets back with the CWGs. 
And Monica Tanner's not here this evening, but she had been um, leading um, some of the interim 28th Street efforts and some of the advocacy efforts. And I think I thought everybody did okay. And we also have tonight Greg here, who is our station's expert. So um, he's here to help you answer any questions. So why don't you just give you our monthly routine update on our engagement with the FTA, the Federal Transit Administration. That is who we're working with very closely to secure uh, what they have committed, $5.1 in federal funding. Uh, we have regular meetings. Uh, we actually have one tomorrow. We do what is called our risk review meetings with a project management oversight consultant, and we go through every aspect of the project. We get queried by the project management oversight consultant and all the major activities and how we're responding to things and looking at the general oversight and management of the project. Um, we are having the FTA do over shoulder reviews of documents. Go ahead, Bill. I'm just curious. Um, uh, Should we get him a mic? Well, we just want the, the remote. I was just curious what um, federal money is going to be looking like. In January. I got that question yesterday, and I wanted to make sure my answer was correct. So the uh, Federal New Starts program is, is guided by legislation. The, the uh, commitment of $5.1 billion has been made, and as I understand it, we, we got an allocation of $500 million. So that, as I understand it, can't get taken away, the money that's already been allocated. Now, the only... The, the only thing is nothing is ever really 100% guaranteed is if if the federal new starts program was underfunded or funded for less, it could maybe affect us in our allocations, like spread the allocations. Right now, typically those allocations are over 10 years. It could maybe spread them out over like say 13, but we'll know more as we get in and we apply and put our application in. But we're still feeling we're, we're still feeling optimistic and confident about securing those funds and moving forward with everything. Um, we did have some congressional briefings earlier um, in September, just really making sure that all our congressional delegation are really familiar with the project and they can help advocate for um, the project and all the benefits it will bring to this area and the region. So we have identified a very important path to getting this full funding grant agreement. That is the ultimate primary goal is to have a fully funded project, submit our application, and there are numerous steps to go through that we want to make sure that we are positioned in the best possible way to receive those funds. So there are some milestones in the design. Right now we're at about a 15% design level of these uh, cost saving candidates. We shared some of the station um, and the tunnel and other, and Erica will be going over some of those elements on the stations, but what are some of the cost savings concepts that we're advancing? And we want to bring those to a 60% design in April and the reason for that is it really will better position us in our application that we're going to make for the FFGA because it will reduce the risk and such and contingency assigned to our project. If we have the design advance further, we don't want to lose any of those possible cost savings if it's assigned higher risk. I have a, I have a question. So uh, with the 60% next year, what... With the 60% next year, what can you show us now? How, what have you done? You're not at 60% now, but what percentage are you at and, and when can we see it? You're going to see some of that this evening and okay. you're going to see 15%. And it's one of the reasons that we're sharing that because we're getting your input on that. And then our board at the oversight committee meeting, uh, well, we actually, we had a workshop. So on Friday, we shared some of those concepts based on the earlier information. They have directed us to pursue those cost-saving exercises and concepts. So then we, it's really important that we continue moving the project forward. So we have some construction milestones. We broke ground on the project in June and we are advancing the early works. But we also uh, are going to go to our board to look at the award of the contract. It's a fairly large contract to construct the launch site for the TBM tunnel boring machine. 
and then uh, we uh, would be uh, the mobilization would be December, and then the actual uh, launch structure would be in February 2025. You are an essential part of this next, the engagement effort. Our board has, uh, through the referral, really uh, instructed us to make sure that we are utilizing uh, our community working groups and key individuals like yourselves to really weigh in. And they want to hear your feedback before they make any decisions on these cost-saving concepts, especially around the station areas. So we're reviewing uh, things also with um, our Auditor General and uh, other key stakeholders. And then once we give those updates in April, we will also be pushing for that FFGA application. The board needs to make some decisions to make this all possible. They uh, just approved Early Works Package 3B Thursday night. That is uh, all of the work that needs to get the station site ready for when they start preparing uh, the construction for the large shafts of a tenant boring machine. They will then have the big package for that early works in December. And then there is a big decision. As you know, we are delivering this tunnel and track work contract through progressive design build. We are in the first phase of that, but there is now the second phase, and that is the actual major construction work of tunneling. So that decision needs to be made, and I will show you that is very important because awarding that contract, we have to have an FFGA before we award that. So FTA milestones are um, FTA supporting these cost-saving measures. And then we would submit our uh, FFGA readiness um, documents that is like showing all of our advanced design in 2020, um, April of 2025. We do a risk assessment. That's where they review um, our project management oversight consultant, looks at the project, assigns, hoping that we're far enough in design, they don't add extra contingency and risk because that helps us keep the project costs down. And then we submit our application in August and we uh, hope to receive that full funding grant agreement end of 2025 or beginning of 2026. This shows all in the boxes key activities that have to happen. They all are interrelated. One is dependent on the other and they all basically point to us getting the FFGA. So early works package three has to happen as far as uh, the construction. It's very important that we continue advancing construction because it's approximately around $30 million a month for each month of delay. So it's really important that while we're waiting for our FFGA that we continue these activities so that we can keep things on schedule because we don't want to impact the overall schedule. So getting uh, the West Portal TBM launch structure is very critical because we are manufacturing the TBM right now and we need to have that launch structure ready. So when the TBM arrives back in California, unassembled, we assemble it, that we're ready to launch the TBM. So we're advancing that contract as well. Uh, we need to have the decision on the second stage, the phase two of the tunnel track work. That is a very large contract. And then all of that, we need to have our FFGA, and before we can award that large contract to keep the project moving, we need to have assurance of the federal funding. Um, as I said, that, that's a, a large contract. Any questions on this? Uh, so does the cost savings idea discussed earlier just now include gutting or decreasing the con contractor's requirement to stay out of the community west of 28th street including trucks of all weights for all purposes and also does that cost savings include employees not parking in our neighborhood one of the directions that are board um, gave us was that um, community impacts, passenger experience at stations, we are looking at more structural type of changes. The largest uh, cost savings are in um, how the interior of the tunnel, and Eric is going to go through that. I, I was talking about construction. Oh, I'm sorry. I was talking about construction in 28th Street, not, so not, not, the, not the boring. 
we're not, we're not, we don't have per, any proposed conceptual changes related to that. So does that include, like we discussed before, no trucks west of 28th Street and parking across Julia? Is that what we're talking I've about? I've got to confirm what's in. We'll be working on a transportation management plan for that area. So none of that has yet been defined where trucks will go. It is certainly something. That's I, not. I, I can that's, expand on that a little bit. That, that, okay. Okay. Because that's not what we were told. Right. So in our environmental document, we have approved haul routes. So the trucks going to the 28th Street station will be coming through the Julian Interchange from 101 and down 28th Street only to mid 28th Street to enter the, the station block site. We are will be developing a construction transportation management plan for um, construction that could potentially include changes to haul routes, but based on the analysis we've done thus far, there's none planned. So <laughs> It, the, the document's not complete, so I can't guarantee you. But I mean, as of right, right now, that's planned to stay. Right. And we do have a requirement in the contract for our contractors that they are not allowed to park their um, vehicles in the neighborhood. They're required to park on the, in the construction staging area or to locate their parking somewhere else and to. Um, but but you're not talking. Their, you're, yeah. you're, you're not talking about the employees, there's gonna be thousands over time. That's the, that's the employees. There's a requirement oh. in the contract that the construction employees are not allowed to park. Okay, the yeah. Julian they're, they're, they're allowing space within the fenced in construction area, yeah. right? Um, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I just, and thank you, Erica. Yeah, well, thank you. Just checking. So this, this, Kind of like you said, you needed to have federal funding secured before the agreement goes in place. Before we award uh, the okay. major, yeah, the second phase, we've awarded the first phase, and then we're doing some amendments to allow for some of the major elements of the first phase. But the second phase, yes, we need to secure. We we got a. Uh, um, yeah, we got pre-award authority to do numerous activities on the project, like secure and buy the tunnel boring machine, advance the early works. But in order to uh, award the second part of the tunnel and track work contract to actually start the actual major construction, we need to have the FRTA in place. We can move that schedule I just walked you through. Uh, everything is on time to have that award uh, end of 2025, beginning of 2026. So this is basically going over um, everything we need to do to get there. And it is, you know, engage with our stakeholders, uh, continue to build consensus to get your feedback, advance the design of the cost saving concepts to ensure that they're at a level that uh, helps assure uh, the effectiveness of those and not get extra risk and contingency assigned to the project. Um, and it allows us for an informed decision on um, the CP2 stage two in spring of uh, 2025. And we also need to um, look at closing the gap. We've applied for some state grants and I'll show you on the later funding slide. So closing the $700 million gap we have right now by both with cost savings and looking at other non-local um, funding opportunities and grants. And any other questions? This is our current funding plan. As you can see on the left, we are listing uh, some of the state money. That's $100 million. On that gray area is the $700 million. We have already um, identified uh, numerous cost saving concepts. Eric is going to go into the categories that those are under, uh, both. Uh, areas where passengers uh, would see the difference. And then many of them are really not passenger related. They're either in the tunnel or behind the scenes. So just wanted you to see our current funding plan. And this is our next steps, pretty much walked through those, um, but uh, looking at those design milestones, as I mentioned, ensuring that we keep the construction activities going forward so we can stay on schedule as much as possible. So that's why it's so important to keep the momentum going on the project, engage um, our CWGs, and then we'll be talking a little bit about that with the DRCs, uh, the VTA board decisions, uh, 
and the board has really relayed to us how important it is to get the community feedback in them making those decisions and then the FTA milestones. So all of these activities are coordinated in time to secure that full funding grant agreement end of 2025 or beginning of 2026. Okay, if there are no further questions, I'm gonna have Eric go through the actual cost dating sets. And I just wanna make sure there's no one online that has questions or comments from this section. All right. Over to All right. So as Bernice mentioned in the, the schedule, we went to the board on November 8th to talk through and get approval to advance um, cost-saving candidates that fall in these five categories here. The tunnel and interior reconfiguration, concurrent tunneling from the east, new hall yard reconfiguration, refining the station design, and conversion of parking structure to spaces of 28th Street Little Portugal Station. We're going to walk through these um, high level, but I mean, we've discussed them previously. Um, for the tunnel interior reconfiguration, which is along the entire length of the tunnel, we're analyzing different efficient use within the tunnel at the, and then of the tunnel structure and simplifying the construction methodology. So that is continuing to be analyzed. Um, we're studying concurrent tunneling from the east as well as from the west. At the New Hall Yard, we're continuing to work with BART to uh, evaluate options about vehicle storage capacity and the different maintenance areas to refine the, the, and, and realize some cost savings there. And the stations we've been discussing, we're um, continuing, we'll be continuing to, to discuss with you all the refinements to the stations. You know, and we've come a long way since mid-September when we showed you various options and then we met again in early October. And then today I have a couple more refined uh, renderings to show that are in progress to show you how we're moving along there. And then in addition, um, we'll uh, continuing to optimize um, the parking by converting the structure into spaces. Um, so in the next slides, we're gonna dive into the stations a little bit, but just wanted to remind you of the criteria as it's on the slides, it hasn't changed, but just wanted to um, touch on the indicators that if it's a plus, it means it's a positive change. Um, equal is no change and negative and the minus is a negative change. So those is whether it's an improvement or uh, not an improvement, it's not about whether it's an increased cost. The plus does not mean an increased cost, it means it's an improvement. Um, so you've seen these before um, at, at the, all the blocks that you see here in a blue on the screen is where we will be locating the surface parking on opening day of the station that will then eventually get integrated with the TOD when TOD comes on the site. Um, and we're maintaining the future Five Moons Trail space that you can see along the bottom of the image there in green. Um, and we'll be having the parking in the other areas. Can, can we go back there real quick? Yes. Above the station plaza area, that blank, uh, that, the blank blue space, uh, What's the future of that? Is it development? So all of the blue sites are future TOD sites. Okay, Just okay. two of them are labeled. Okay. okay. Yeah. And this is an updated rendering you see on the right of the 28th Street Station back to a circular headhouse to mimic the spires on the church. Um, we've optimized the station infrastructure facilities to move more things to the North Bend facility at the corner of East St. James and 30th so that we can shrink the above ground footprint or the footprint of the station infrastructure facilities just north of the station and allow for a commercially, commercially leasable space in the bottom corner there. Um, and while, all while still providing the, the TOD that will front 28th Street space for that future TOD. This rendering here, um, you can see this is looking at the entrance coming from the north. And you can see the station infrastructure facility building on the right there, and that's the commercially leasable space. A downtown station, um, based on feedback, we're converting the, the roof line into an integrated with the walls, um, with the arch, continuing with the arch theme, which is present throughout the city of San Jose and, and the county as well, maintaining that iconic station presence. Um, we're maximizing the efficiency of station infrastructure facilities here within the, the building, as well as um, the, the little bit that's in the plaza to the north of the building. 
And as there's the two entrances, this main entrance on Santa Clara Street, and there's an entrance from the Paseo on the backside facing the future TOD, we're choosing to, to more prominently focus on this main entrance. Here's a view of what the inside of the station would look like. At the Deardon station, we are continuing to refine and use more cost-effective materials, similar to all stations. We optimize the station infrastructure facilities here to still accommodate for future TOD to the south of the station, fronting Post Street. Um, and we're maintaining the prominent roof design um, with a simplified rectangular structure to um, coordinate with the future development planned in the area. Here's another image of the updated rendering. These are in progress. We're keeping you up to speed. They're still going to be refined. I just wanted you to be able to see as last time we just looked at plan views and provide something that's you know, three dimensional to give better sense. So real quick, yes. Uh, on the other station, you know, you kind of have an arch roof and pretty corners and 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 beautiful design. But but here, you just have aluminum and glass. How does that work with what you just said about the other station reflecting the old San Jose? So there was a request from the partners of the city in the area, as there's a plan to be the Google Downtown West project and the future Deardon Intermodal Station. So they wanted a square roof here in particular to be able to integrate with those. So this is station in particular is one we're still looking at and refining. And it's very hard to see with these black and white renderings what the material finishes would look like. So that's something that we'll get to in the future. But just wanted to show the change and update of the floor for today. Okay. And then last one to touch on the Santa Clara station, um, we reduced the size of the station entrance roof, which is, is over on the far right. The more prominent picture uh, figure here is the parking garage. It's about uh, storage tracks there. Uh, we're maintaining the orchard pavilion concept that we worked through with the Santa Clara Design Review Committee. Um, and here's another view of the station we'll That's all that we have, that's the latest in the costumes. Yes, Bill. You mentioned you're thinking about concurrent tunneling from the east side. Yes. Um, that would involve buying a new boring machine or a second one. Yes, it would. If that were, if we were to concurrently tunnel, yes, it would be require an additional tunnel boring machine. Uh, um, I can see how it could save time doing that, but I don't know how that would save money. Right, it's more of a schedule savings than a, than a money savings by because saving time on the schedule is in essence money cost savings. But that's why we're evaluating that. It takes a little bit longer to evaluate if that's something that's going to provide the, the enough cost savings to to complete. So we're continuing to analyze that. And can the boring machines be uh, resold afterwards, or or is it are they a one use only or? Um... So the fifty five foot diameter single bore. Uh, or TBM that we that will be tunneling from the west is being fabricated specifically for our project. Um, I think some of the options being explored, or one option being explored from the east would be twin bore tunneling, and those tunnel bar machines are smaller and could potentially be reused um, or reconsidered from somewhere else. I don't know specifically the details. We can follow up with that, but I know that the, the larger one is being made specifically for our project. Okay, thank you. Any questions online from folks You're in the room? Okay. Let me turn back to the ladies. Thanks, Anna. I've actually played with this somewhere. Um, it, not today, obviously, but in the future, in a, in a future meeting, could, could you talk about what a typical day might be like? At Five Moons Church in Cristo Rey, if you do the east, the pouring from the east as well, um, the impacts different from just doing the west only, from the west only pouring. Does that make sense? It's a question that you think about. Yes, I would say if, if we decide to move forward. And, and do that concurrent tunneling, we can definitely talk through what, what that would feel like and what changes would be for the local neighbors. Okay. 
Okay. We are now going to um, talk about uh, our 2025 CWG meetings and structures. We um, are planning to do our um, meetings as we have customarily scheduled them with uh, the quarterly meetings in February, May, September, and November. Based on the feedback that we have received to date, um, continue and do the hybrid option. So have uh, the in-person meetings for all of those four, and then for those who prefer can't make it physically, um, they can attend virtually. We um, also uh, would um, hold the separate meetings for each of the groups like we've been doing. So uh, 20th Street Little Portugal, Downtown Dierdon, and Santa Clara. So basically keep the same structure, but we also would like to uh, talk and get some feedback about um, engaging um, the DRCs in some of these meetings and actually having our CWGs get more involved as we start looking at the aesthetic elements of the stations. You already have been sort of filling that role in the last few months as we've been looking at uh, some of the station configurations. So we wanted to uh, incorporate that and get your feedback on basically either having, like we've done in the past, have the DRC members, there is some overlap um, attend it or kind of combine the roles. So just want to get some feedback on that. Um, we would then do, as we've done in the last couple of months as well, our kind of as needed interim meetings. We got some feedback yesterday to also hold those in person. So we'd like to get your feedback on that. Um, I think actually in person or virtual, basically the same structure as the regular meetings. Um, and then we would also be uh, adding those meetings in as needed to provide feedback to our board um, if there are relevant subject matters on the board meeting that they would want weigh in from our CWG members. Um, so I am uh, wanting to get a general pulse on all of that from you and see how you feel about that and any other input or feedback um, that you may have. Um, the other thing we talked about yesterday was maybe engaging some of the university students as we're looking at station aesthetics and things um, from San Jose State and Santa Clara. And we got some really positive um, feedback and a desire to do that. And any other suggestions that you have uh, for uh, making these meetings uh, more engaging, uh, getting a larger uh, contingency um, in attendance like in the past and uh, the general format. Um, just to let you know, the DOT has a couple of interns who are already familiar with our area. Um, Peter Rice would be the contact there. Um, we just met with him and his two interns a couple weeks ago for lunch. And they're part of the Urban Studies program in San Jose State. So they're graduate students. Mm -hmm. I assume you'd be going for the Urban, urban Studies students, right? It, or architectural students as we get into okay. Yeah, but no, that's a... Thank you. That's it. We'll follow up on that. That would be urban planning students at San Jose State. Um, and we don't have an architecture program. I could connect you to Cum University for students, but you have to understand the timeline for that. So right now we would be planning for the fall semester or the spring semester. And the Cum University executive director would try to recruit faculty with appropriate staff. So you need a pretty well defined mission for them. What would the student's role be? Uh, how much time would be expected? And so on. So that's possible. I can help with that. That'd be great. Um, I understood the board directed you all to look into having a, a facilitator at these meetings. Has that been dropped or am I wrong? No, we are still, we um, in, in the uh, current uh, cost-saving efforts with professional services, we have uh, had to put uh, adding more professional services contracts on hold. We have not dropped the idea, but because of the overall cost savings and uh, the direction to reduce professional services, um, we put a pause on that. But 
still still planning on doing that in the future. Okay, I, I also want to talk a little bit about virtual and combined meetings because it's very frustrating for those of us who are here. We have no idea who's not here. Could we have a report on, is there an audience for this? Uh, we know, I guess we did roll call at the beginning, so none of our uh, working group members are participating online. Is that right? I think there was one. Was there one, Kristen? No. 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 So I like, I, like, I like that built into the structure so that we know who's out there or why we're even messing with virtual meetings if nobody's out there. Okay. Thank you. Many other people are online right now. Well, so I got a phone call today uh, from VTA that showed up as suspected spam, so I didn't answer it. They left a message. <laughs> um, they left a message asking if I'd be attending today. Of course, I always attend unless I'm on vacation. Even then, I do. Um, did you get any feedback? Whoever made those phone calls. Do they actually contact reach it was our reminder calls for today so it's the first time i've ever received yeah so we're trying to be more proactive our members that are not as engaged or haven't responded to our meeting invite so just responding or that at least there's a reminder for folks of the meeting coming up and i believe some folks oh, do call back actually i'm uh, surprised connie and, and helen's one or the other on here helen's out of town so yeah yeah helen originally accepted but wasn't able to tell let's see yes david this is monica tanner on the phone right now i was the other one that left you the message and i called a couple of other individuals and danny yeah he was able to give me a phone call back this afternoon, letting me know that he was attending. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Amanda Rawson. I work in public art and actually work on the public art um, design uh, guidelines on uh, um, the um, with Site Lab, which worked on uh, on the project for the um, the Twenty Street Little Porsche Bowl um, station. And uh, we were closely with Ms. Steven, who's here. But I, I am also sitting here as somebody who's part of San Jose Arts Advocates. And I just want to share that I'm here because Terry shared an email invite with our team, uh, with Peter Allen. And um, I also live in Japantown, which will be, I'll be somebody who uses many of these stations um, as a community representative. So uh, just want to share that so you know that you know, there is that community representation. Um, but that our, the arts groups, the arts community um, is very interested and will be very vocal. They are, may not be right now, but they will likely be as things continue to move forward. So um, I'm more than happy to continue to, to be present in, this, in these meetings as a community member. So, so when, when you have your arts meeting, the rest of the community would like to know about it. I don't care anybody. I don't care. <laughs> That's FYI, because because you're talking about having a community arts meeting, and I I think I'm community. <laughs> I actually had a question for Terry. Follow up. Um, does community university have like a like a scoping document or like a little mini RFP or something that like an application, like something that we could look at that may like spark what thoughts we would need to bring to the table with them. Just, just, I'm thinking like, you know, your, your questions were really like how many students, how many hours, what's the purpose? Like almost something that we could brainstorm around might help us come up with some ideas. Just a thought if they have anything. Yeah, if you're interested in following through on this, what we should do is set up a meeting with the current executive director uh, and kind of and kind of talk it through. You will need to bring to that meeting at least a broad idea of what you'd like to have the students do. And bear in mind, this is also a commitment of your time to manage the students. The faculty member for the classes will will do a lot of it. The university staff will do some of it, but it really needs to be a partnership to 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 make it work. Um, and I'll just say one more thing. Uh, you sent out uh, community engagement sort of flyer to us 
uh, Denise posted it on the Facebook page, on the Facebook page, and I emailed it to our uh, <laughs> Bay Area Rapid Transit, I mean, our Bay, our, <laughs> our BART Transit Act. <laughs> our bar transit our village advocate. Yes. Our bar, yeah, that one. <laughs> our bar truck. I, I emailed it to that, and we got a couple folks here tonight, and I hope a couple uh, online. So that was helpful. Thank to you. Have something. A tool. To send out. Yeah. That's wonderful. Thank yeah. you. Thank you for using those resources. We're glad it was helpful. Hey there, I'm Christina Goswako, LIP in VTA Real Estate and TOD. I just wanted to add on to the community conversation that students from San Jose State actually did help with the Five Wounds Urban Village Plan yeah. survey outreach. So what the students did there, it was a, I think it was a business class, and um, the city and VTA were, uh, what's it called? Um, Oh, okay. Um, the city and VTA were a potential client that the students could choose a project to do. And so they got to pick, and two of the groups of students, like four or five students, chose to do the um, the VTA city project where they helped door knock for the survey. So they took the survey out on tablets and went out into the community while it was posted online and available for anyone to fill out. Um, and did a bunch of outreach and mapped out the neighborhoods where they did it. And then the two groups did presentations at the end of the semester on that. Any other questions or comments? All right. With that, we can move on to our construction update section with Brent. All right. Yeah, we're going to talk about a couple of things this evening. Um, we're going to walk you through, kind of show you what some of the construction is like on the project right now, because we actually actively are in construction, which is mainly on the west side of the project in Santa Clara, but um, things to come. So we're, we're sharing that with all the CWGs. Um, I'm going to be showing you some images from our west portal New Hall Yard site, and we actually have a really fun and interesting drone video that will take you over the site. I wish we had drones around for the last 20 years of me doing this, because it's really helpful to see, see the construction really unfold from up top. But a couple things I'll highlight to you in the video is kind of where the tunnel boring machine launch structure will be. That's in blue on this map. Um, I'll try and highlight where some of the facilities that we're building are on the map. But right now, we really have early works occurring. So that includes uh, drainage, utilities, putting in storm drains, um, pumps, utilities that we need that don't exist uh, for you know the tunnel lining factory or for um, offices, all kinds of things. So... Um, I talked about this, so some additional work that is to come like in preparation of the launch structure will be a little bit more uh, heavy civil construction out there in Santa Clara. There'll be some excavation, some concrete work. We'll have uh, additional water treatment. We have some on site right now. Uh, we have to monitor the site. We have to monitor the railroads. So that includes a lot of instrumentation, making sure um, we know where everything is, making sure things aren't moving on the site. And then there'll be some uh, excavation beginning for the structure as well uh, to launch the tunnel boring machine. It's, it's a very deep structure. So there'll be um, what we call supports for the excavation. Those are essentially walls that we'll build underground to kind of hold back the earth. And then we'll kind of excavate in between them. And there's a lot of bracing and things that will come as well. All right, so this is the video. Um, it's about a two minute video. Right now we are looking north at the southern end of the site. So 880 is kind of at your back. If you've ever driven on 880 over the rail yard or over the Caltrain line. To the left is Caltrain and Union Pacific. And to the right, just out of view where those green trees are is like PayPal or where the earthquakes play. So we're gonna uh, take a little trip north here. 
So this used to be the old New Hall yard, lots of railroad tracks in here. Uh, VTA has been working here for decades to remove a lot of the, the hazmat and soil. You can see those blue tanks there. Those are our, our, our filtration tanks that uh, filter a lot of the water. Um, we'll need a lot of these on this site. You can see the grader there on the right. Building a new access. They've actually graded and moved around dirt and soil and fill on the entire site. See the practice facility here. Uh, there's some drainage there on the right. So putting in a lot of things that didn't exist. And these are some of the early works that we can expect here on a site like the station site where we'll need to do a lot of these early things kind of in that first year when construction begins at the stations as well. There's a lot of just preparation work that needs to happen before, before the big machinery and the big digging. So you can see the contractors parking here too. They kind of centralize that on the site. It's a very long site. They have um, their offices here towards the northern end of the site. There's a lot of new housing that's been built in Santa Clara to the right, just, just kind of out of frame there. This is the historic Santa Clara Depot station there on the left. And right now we're approaching where the parking facility will be for Santa Clara. The station will be kind of on the left here at the end of the site, facing Brokaw where this big semi trucks pulling in. This site has two construction entrances. So there's one on the north end and one on the south end because it's such a long site. Yeah. So this will be fun. If you all think something like this is helpful, you know, we can continue to have uh, some drone video, give you future updates in the future. I think it adds some more context and element than just static pictures, which is typically how we, how we do it. So, all right, we wanted to uh, talk a little bit about construction screening. Again, one of the first things that you see come up in your community, this is very community facing. Uh, this is an example of a screen at the Santa Clara site. Um, we plan to have fencing at all of our construction sites. And typically kind of that first year or first year and a half, that fencing is likely to kind of move uh, as the contractor is starting to kind of establish the site and have to do demolition or move things around. So that kind of first initial year, well, we kind of have like a phase one fencing and then we'll begin to kind of put in the more permanent fencing. Uh, but there will be opportunities for um, branding at certain locations on the fencing. I'll show you what that looks like in a bit. Uh, there's also the opportunities for some co-branding. So we're able to work with the earthquakes here. So they'll have, they have their logo on some, some, of, some of the screen panels. And we could work with other organizations or businesses in the area as well on screening. So some other examples of where we'll have places for other types of signage that aren't just that kind of screening barrier. I have some project information signage so people know who to call or who to email if they have questions or noise complaints. Never get those, I promise. Um, <laughs> we, you know, there could be business sign signage for our thriving business program, promoting local businesses, right? Or instructing folks in the community on how to get to those businesses. That's really important. Right, so we'll have wayfinding signage. You know, businesses are open on Julian, or businesses are open down on Rock, or uh, things like that. So I mentioned this a little bit, but we kind of see kind of two phases of fencing. So fencing in place when we do those early works that I kind of showed you here today. So when we're doing soil testing, maybe some of the early building demolition that will have to happen at Twenty Eighth Street, Little Portugal. And then as the site is kind of really locked in, we'll have a more consistent fence line that will be in place probably for, you know, eight or 10 years throughout the, the major construction. And that's where we'll really have more of an opportunity to do that uh, static community branding or have space uh, for the community to, to have some signage or uh, participate in that in some way. So some things that we're really tracking with San Jose that are really important for the city as a partner are some pretty major events coming up in 2026, uh, Super Bowl, March Madness, FIFA World Cup, all coming and having the presence of the South Bay, which is awesome for our communities, right? These are world 
class events. So um, we're happy to have those. We want to make sure that the fencing that we do have up in the project is pristine and clean and uh, well presented um, for the community. So David requested this, unfortunately he's gone, yeah. but I will share it with all of you here. Uh, just kind of wanted to check in on what's happening out on the site of 28th uh, Little Portugal today. So uh, areas in orange, you know, we've talked to you about what has been actually handed over to the contractor to date. Those are the areas in orange. So that is where uh, their security services are present 24 seven, they're monitoring those. Um, our reports have come way, way down uh, since they have had 24 seven security, like just way, way down. And in our mind, that's a really good thing, right? So yeah, um, and a lot less reports from you all too, in the community uh, since that time. Um, areas in green and blue. In green, we're still working on those acquisitions as an agency. Um, and then in blue, uh, this is the Della Majori site. So that acquisition is, is almost done, but it's likely that we're going to kind of, it's possible we may extend their term. So they may be there for some more time, uh, just because the project is slowing just a little bit right now. Um, we're negotiating with the contractor right now on uh, the additional management of the orange area. So how often are they going to cut the weeds? How often are they going to maintain some of the blight if it occurs? Um, we're processing a change order right now. And I don't have the total details on like the schedule of when those things will happen. But I wanted to at least provide this as a start and more details will come on that. So contacts, most importantly, will be uh, Brent and um, and Nan, so she's just getting her project email, so we'll make sure we get that uh, to you out, but those will be your two point of contacts for if you have, uh, you know, want direct access to, hey, I spot this, or hey, we need assistance with this. We'll work with the contract team or the contractor or other VTA resources or security personnel to make sure that the needs are addressed. Um, I did a, a nice hour long sidewalk with David last week. Um, so he and I walked up and down the whole corridor. We didn't walk all the way up to Silver Creek, but we, Julian all the way down to 23rd. We spotted a couple things. Uh, we had um, our landscaping contractor come back out and correct a couple things, but it's looking a lot nicer out there than it was a couple weeks ago. We got the weeds cut, um, the fire hazards taken care of. We still have one or two more things that they need to still come back out and address. But um, you know, I wanted to let you know that we're making progress. Yes. So, um, and I think it's good that we just do that on a regular cadence, right? So, um, you know, our team can come out, we'll get, you can get to know them better as well, develop those relationships, they can meet you all as well. Um, it was great. I got to talk to folks at the church. I got some Portuguese bread while I was waiting for David. So it was just, the, everyone invited me in and it, it was great. So it was, um, I think it was, Good use of our time together. Danny. So, so me and I am with her. I have uh, I have rivets from the Golden Gate Bridge. I have bolts from the Fallon statue. Uh, what I would like is either a bolt from one of the columns, you know, just just a bolt, yeah. or maybe a three by three connection, uh, a little patch. Uh, so that I can save for our, our history. I know a guy. That old boy. <laughs> I know a guy. I think that's something we could we could figure out for you, Danny. I think sure. I, I think that's gonna be a great way for the community to remember San Jose Steel. Yeah. Agreed. Okay. Just wanted to talking a lot about things to come here, but again, just going over some of those early things that would be happening in the next year. Um, once all the properties change hands, um, there is kind of just work that happens behind the scene that's not always so obvious, right? So we have to do things like set up security. We've done that, assess the site, do additional surveys. Um, these properties have been occupied um, by people in the community for a long time. So there's additional environmental work we have to do. We have to get permits for that, to do additional soil testing before we can demolish the buildings that are there, clear the site, things like that. And we kind of move into that next phase, which is 
uh, stuff that happens that looks like in the video that I showed you earlier. So there could be some reconnecting the utilities uh, to prepare the site for the big civil construction, probably grading the site, putting up additional fencing, uh, connecting to the storm sewer line, things like that, getting our construction gates established. I didn't mention that uh, in Santa Clara, but we're connecting like to the city's facilities and things like that so that contractor has uh, proper drainage and water and power. Those are some of the first things we do is we shut those off when we get these properties, like we shut the PG&E PG power off right away when we uh, got the large warehouse buildings there. So we wouldn't have any uh, fire department calls. And then just ongoing noticing. So we always remind you all, we have a subscription system for the project. It's typically station-based. So for you all, most of your interest is in the station here closest to your community. So if you want to um, if you want construction updates, timely updates, um, just make sure you go to btapark.org and subscribe to the station so we have information so that we can push that information up to you. You're, of course, always going to get special access to CWG members, either emails from, you know, Kristen or other members of our team moving forward um, when big things happen. All right, we're going to start to wrap up here, so I'll let Kristen, come up unless anyone has any construction related questions. I, I do. Uh, Bill, yeah. Um, the Santa Clara um, area is quite large, right? It's, yeah. it's really the biggest. Is a lot of that going to be for train storage at the end, or, or is housing yes. going on there after construction? Or? No, that whole site is envisioned for maintenance and operations and in yard storage. Yes, we don't have any transit oriented development at that site. So, I, what was number seven historic buildings? Yeah, so some of our sites. Uh, our next historic buildings or buildings that are on the register. So again, we have to survey those or monitor those, make sure that there's no settling. So some of the early things that we do is we have to get access to those structures or make sure that they're protected. And that takes a, there's a lot of regulatory things that we have to work through to do that. So it takes quite a bit of time. Um, I wanna speak on the um, purpose of the screening. I think another interesting way to go about it, I know Brent Hitchin mentioned the idea of the upcoming activities that are going to happen when we have an international um, presence. Um, but also thinking about, you know, the community and um, representing the, you know, the, the, the community through temporary um, public art opportunities on the fencing that speak to some of those. You know, a lot of what we learned when we were doing, when we were meeting with the young students in that area was that um, soccer is a big deal to them, and we know that that's what's coming up. And so how can that be a part of the cultural representation through um, an arts lens? So that can happen at a really kind of, you know, um, affordable budget. And then also just thinking about the historic buildings and listening to what Dan has said about um, the importance of San Jose Steel, you know, I think there's a way to go about that by including um, artists in that design process um, around including that history um, on, 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 you know, in, in that area. So I just wanted to throw it out there while I, it's in my head, so. No, I appreciate that. I'm thinking, um, you know, typically we engage urban planning or engineering students through community university, but I don't think there are any rules about other students that we could engage the community university, right? Not at all. There could be art students or other programs that we engage with too to even um, keep that close to home. Yeah. And if San Jose High is still right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We partnered with we partnered with San Jose High on some of the BRT art at the 24th Street station, the Bulldogs. So there's that's represented there. Okay. Any questions or comments online? Okay, Kristen, you're up. Great, thanks for answering. Switch. All right, just one. Just wanted to share our PSB2 year in review. <laughs> so excited that we've had over 40 different types of events across our project alignment and the different station areas this year. 
These range from tabling events to project wide events like tours um, or project meetings. And we were able to engage over 2,000 people in person. These are in person metrics specifically. So it's exciting to be out there in the communities talking to folks um, in the different station areas and getting the project information out there. So I wanted to share a snapshot on our project-wide engagement, as well as the three different uh, community working group station areas as well. So on a project-wide level, we had one community meeting, four different table and pop-up events, an Ask ETA collaboration event, as well as four project alignment walking tours that happened, and a combined CWG meeting that happened in September as well. And in the 28th Street Little Portugal station area, we had our community meeting just a few months ago. We had our Via de Portugal tabling pop up, which David has kindly um, connected us with those folks. And then I know a lot of you went to the 28th Street Little Portugal station walking tour a few weeks back as well. We hope to do more of those in the future as well. And we had five 28th Street Little Portugal CWG meetings, not including tonight. So thank you for coming out, letting us know of these different events so we can partner with folks in the area and get up there. And then the downtown Deardon area, we did have four different tabling events that we went to and five different CWG meetings. And Santa Clara, three different tabling pop-ups as well as four CWG and just wanted to bring up our CWG stakeholder toolkit. I know Terry, you brought that up and you shared some of the materials as well as David, thank you for doing so. We just launched this, this series for our November CWGs and hopefully it's helpful for you as a communications toolkit. It is of course the first time we're using this. So we wanna hear your feedback. Let us know if there's any you know, difficulties on the technological side or even just user friendliness. Um, we'd love to hear that feedback and integrate it to come. But just know that we'll be having this regularly for our CWG meetings, but you can use this as a resource to get the information out there to your communities. And thank you, Terry. It looks like some folks have come because of you sharing information there. And I also wanted to give you a heads up that for our upcoming community meeting that's happening in December, we'll also have a similar toolkit that will be distributed. And with that, I want to pause any comments, questions on engagement, review and review from our online folks. All right. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for that. Um, we will go into our CWG member report app now. Oops. So we'd love to hear if there's any updates on ways that you've been sharing our project information with your communities. I know we've mentioned some already in this meeting, as well as with general concerns, questions, comments that you've also been hearing from the communities as well. So just opening up the floor, we won't go into order here. If you have anything to share and chime in, please do so. So, go ahead. So every month, Plata Rail has a meeting. I mean, the city doesn't meet in July and December, but we do. Uh, and we always report on what's going on here. Either it's BRT, the uh, uh, capital project, and this. So I, I want you guys to know that uh, our neighborhoods are, are informed. Thank you, Danny. And do reach out if you have any questions that you'd like us to share so that we can keep you informed with me. Thank you. Um, I'll share here at the Mexican Heritage Plaza, y'all might already know, we hold large-scale community events. We have our last one of the year on December 14th, which is a Saturday. If you all have capacity, if you have resources to put a resource table out during the event, that would be great because I think it's a great opportunity to share what's going to happen um, to our community members. It's from 5.30 to 9.30 p.m. Um, here at the Plaza on the 14th. It's our um, Fiesta Navideña uh, holiday event. Any other folks? 
Great. Nothing else to move along. Did want to share our next steps. As mentioned, this is our last meeting for the year, but our next meeting will be on February 12th. Unfortunately, I myself will not be there. I'll be taking some family leave. Um, but we will be sharing a general phase two update, a construction update, and hope to share more on our thriving business program as well. And we'll take a deep dive into our 2025 work plan, really workshop that with you and make sure that our year ahead is strong and that you are all hearing the information that you want to hear in the coming year. And lastly, before we adjourn, I do want to remind everyone about our December community meetings. We do have the in-person and virtual virtual on the second um, via Zoom. You can either go to the bit.ly URL at the bottom or scan the QR code, but we'll also be sending out a toolkit, like you mentioned, emails to come. So this is not your only chance to get the information. And then also an in-person meeting on Wednesday the 4th at the San Jose Chamber of Commerce. So let your networks know. We'll send out resources for you to share and distribute, but hope to see you all there, either in person or virtual. So with that, we will adjourn. Looks like 15 minutes back to your night. So have a great night. Thank you all. Thank you. And good luck. Thank you. Yeah, have fun. <laughs> it's a different kind of challenge, right? <laughs>